Hey there, one of the slippers. It's your good old Uncle Christian here, live in front of the camera. Finally, some progression! We're evolving! Uh, although, it was bound to happen sooner or later. At least now I can capture some weird shit that's going on during the review. Don't ask why. Just don't. So now let's begin the review with... I can see the giant. Oh, wait. My bad. It's supposed to be pronounced I can see the giant in all caps! Or are you supposed to pronounce it in one word? Con the youth. I can see word? John? Anyway, well, let's begin with the review. So the series starts out. Um, what's going on here? Oh, hi there, Mr. Person. Where am I? Why am I here? Who the fuck are you? Oh, you're the teacher. You know what? Let's retry this again. Hey, 
The story starts out with five strange videos that are very eerie, and then two random people uploading video of strange stuff going on. After that, we are introduced to the teacher, who is very anonymous. Is he a friend or foe? Who does he work for? Can we trust him at all? Or is he absolutely evil? Or if you wanna leave, I'm with it. is he a goddamn goofball? We meet some protagonists, but they come and go until Mitchell comes to the picture. Now shit gets real. A lot of questions get answered, but there's only one remaining. Till the end of the series. Will they escape from the giant? Well, you could get the answer right away by watching the last episode on the YouTube channel. Ain't like nothing is stopping you from doing so. You're probably doing it right now, aren't you? Fucking assholes. Now, this is something very new well, to the show. I'm actually reviewing a series that does have an ending. Finally. Something very rare. Very rare indeed. Since, well, most of the reviews that I've done in this show, they still continue on, at least of this review. And that could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what a particular series. In cases of something like Marvel Hornets, where it started out very strong, very promising, and when it gets to the actual end, it doesn't really hit to a high note. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave it to that. There's probably no reason why other Cinevlogs still continue to go on, and we can only hope that it, when inevitable does happen, it will end strong only hope. So in cases like this, my ratings for the series that actually does have an ending, my rating will go for the whole series itself. Although one could argue that's what I've been doing for the entire fucking time. But, but, let me be clear about this. I know it sounds very, very, very silly to do something like that. Why review an actual little series that doesn't actually have an ending? Why not wait for the end and review the finished product? Well, I could do that, but then there would be no show. The reviews I do is a reflection of how I felt about them when I first watched them and first reviewed them. When I do come back to a series that I already reviewed, I can see if things have improved, it, there's have been changes during the, the series you know new characters introduced so on and so forth and the most likely of things i probably won't review the series itself when it actually ends i kind of let it sit there for a while let it be in there let it time to maybe think upon it and then i can go back and rewatch the whole series it's very hard to give a good read on how the actual story is structured on the whole, it's a combination of both being a mystery and a straightforward slender vlog. And it does flow very well when you watch it from beginning to end. If I can praise, absolutely praise something for this series, is that it doesn't follow the standard formula of what is now typically how you make a slender vlog series. At this point, guys and gal pals, you have watched all of my Slender Vlog reviews up until this point. And if you have not, then what the fuck is wrong with you? Seriously, what are you doing? Go away here, you know what? Go watch all of them. Do it now. Now. Now! For the many Slender Vlogs that are out there, with the exception of Dark Harvest, Everman Hybrid, and what have you to many or few, they all seem to follow a very, very simple formula on how to make a Slender Vlog series. Which is, hey look, I'm gonna create a fake vlog and put whatever vlog thingy, but a but a but a but a but a. Oh no, the video is all messed up. It's all going all. 
Uh, I don't know for some reason why he's doing that. Oh, look, there's a big tall man coming to chase after me. There's no way to stop him. Why? And don't worry. This particular series may start that kind of familiar kind of formula that, that most of us may have. But I'm telling you right now, it's going to be very different from here on out in the future. I'm not saying that's bad whatsoever, it's completely fine. But when you start to watch each of these series, even sometime in a row, you can see that it could get a little monotonous because they start to kind of gel to one another. At first, later on, yes, like I said, it does get very different. And it does. It, it, those series does actually become a really good series. This is where I can see the giant is very unique. It's very different. The first five videos, they're all very strange. They don't really follow of what's going on, but they kind of set up the whole mood of the whole series. It's very eerie, it's very anonymous. You have no clue what's exactly going on, but it catches your eye right away. As it continues on, it's very random, but at the same time, you can follow it very easy. It does really have a point A to a point Z to it. What makes it very unique is that, well, it doesn't really start off as being a Slender Vlog, it's kind of more paroxy kind of series. And we don't really follow a human protagonist until more later on in the series. But yeah, it starts out as a paroxy series, and then goes into a Slender Vlog kind of series. And then back to a paroxy series, and then back to being a Slender Vlog series, and so on and so forth. Speaking of Paroxy, I think it's time we actually will talk about a Paroxy who also is our main character of the series. Wait. The Paroxy for this series named The Teacher. How can I best describe him? Very random as all hell. He is very entertaining to watch. He actually does have a lot of personality in his character. Besides being a goofball, he does generally care for the people that he tries to help. When he was first introduced, he seems very ominous. Don't know whether he'll be the bad guy of the series or the good guy. Someone who can have moves like that? I don't think he can be all that bad, and my guess was right. The teacher is probably the best character in this series, considering there's three other characters and they have as much depth to them as paper. Since we're on the subject, let's actually talk about those characters. There's Christopher, which he is just there. Well, there's Victoria who's in there, but she's gone after a couple of videos. And last but not least, I guess, there's Mitchell who actually has a lot more character depth compared to both Christopher and Victoria, but not by much. Huh. Well, if there's any quote unquote negative to speak about, it's the lack of character death in the series. But you know what? This series was not really structured to have any character death. Yes, I know I'm the guy who reviewed these Thunderbug reviews. My major thing, if you have been paying attention, is that my major thing is to have character death in this series. And yet right now what I'm saying to you, this particular series, it doesn't really matter at all. Well again, this particular series was not structured to that. I know it sounds very strange. It's it's kind of difficult to actually explain to you. But let, let's put an example in this particular case. You remember Marble Hornets, right? Yeah, that particular center ball. Okay. Do you ever recall any of the characters to have some kind of character death, some kind of character extinction? Do you notice anything different about any of these characters whatsoever besides them being white and they're human and they have hair? Do you notice anything different? Of course not. In that kind of sort of way, as silly as that sounds, 
I can see a giant is kind of like marble horns in that sort of way, with the exception being that marble horns should have ended a lot more sooner than when it actually ended. No spoilers. I'm not really a big fan of how Marble Horns ended, but I will review that series whenever I get a chance to. But back to what I was saying about I Can See the Giant. I Can See the Giant characters, if I can put in that quotation, they're not really there to have some kind of major depth. They're not really there to have some kind of development. See, they're more like tools, if you will, that they need to actually kind of move everything that goes around and around. Christopher and Victoria, they're pretty much avatars. That's it, that's all they are. They don't really have any character distinguished with the exception that Chris is a lot more younger and, well, he writes like a 10 year old will. And Victoria, well, she's just there to be just there overall. Other than that, that's pretty much about it. Yes, Mitchell does has a little more character depth in his own character, but not as much. But it does kind of revolve and does focus on him as a series in, in a halfway point. But like I say, it goes back to the teacher and that's really the series is basically about Mitchell and the teacher. And I really wouldn't call this series plot heavy yes there are some things here and there but it's kind of light on the plot if there's any way I describe it it's like a big old action movie but here's the real kicker about it it keeps on moving and moving and moving it's it's like a train it keeps on going and going and going without taking a stop without you know resting for anything the only time it does take a little breather to go <sighs> that's when they actually you know have Mitchell say something or like can I explain a little something and they go back and wrong and keeps on going and going and going that's the best way to describe the series itself the biggest quote-unquote negative there is is just you know well the lack of character but it doesn't really matter it's fine characters in this particular series they're just there just to be there then to move the plot along and you know what I think the teacher himself I guess you can say I think he has enough characteristic to actually make I can say giant much more very interesting Slenderman in this particular series I gotta say I'm really digging him the way the series kind of wrote him He's back to being, well, a boogeyman, if you will. Back to the original mythology of Slenderman, quote-unquote. He's there to haunt you wherever you go, and he will take you. Short to your point, like I said, I actually dig him. This is the part where I usually talk about the negatives in whatever series I review. <sighs> I really couldn't have found any negatives, with the exception of what I said earlier, but like I said, doesn't really count. And other than that, that's it. Being dead serious here, so I'm gonna talk about more of the positives. Well, a positive. And the one positive to speak about is the soundtrack. My god, it's really awesome stuff. It's what really sets it apart from other center vlogs. And you know what? I even count the envious corrupt stuff that goes on through the series. I know it's not really music, but to me, it gives I Can See the Giant its own significant sound to it. Now, I Can See the Giant, it has this unique, corrupt, picture quality thing, hands down, no doubt about it. And it sounds, it's, it's very, very different and very extinct. You know what, let me play some clips for you.
honest, I really can't recall that any other Slender blog does have that kind of significant sound to it, but, you know, I can see the giant, something about that where it's not just a sound to it, not just a beep thing, its own sound quality is actually its own ambience, its own atmosphere to it. It adds more to this particular Slender Vlog. Now let's compare it to one to other. Now here's whatever Slender Vlog series. And now here's I can see the giants. And that's where I think I see the giant does it just absolutely great with it. I'm saying this right now. Without a doubt, I can see the giant is one of the absolute best Slender Vlog series of all time. Out of well, most of the Slender Vlogs I have reviewed, this one, I'm not gonna lie, I was very hesitant to review, but after the fact I was so very surprised and all that hesitation went away. I would say it does a whole lot new to stray from other Slender Vlogs out there. And you know what? I am proclaiming this right now. If Tribe 12 does a Marble Hornish, I think it won't. But if it does, which it fails to deliver the ending, I can see a giant would take a place as number one Slender Vlog of all time in, in my list. I can see the giant ending is probably the best ending to a Slender Vlog. Well, right now is the only one I have seen that actually has an actual really good ending. It's absolutely satisfying. I am not gonna spoil anything for you, but my God. I can literally watch it over and over and over till the end of the world. I, I, I think it will happen. But yeah. I mean, I know there are probably other Slender Vlogs that does have an ending. But I think it's kind of safe to say that I can see the giant ending is, is really damn good. But who knows, maybe one other Slender Vlog would just be by beside be like, oh, what? Overall, watch this series right now I cannot praise it enough at this point I'm literally sucking this big huge cock and it's hitting me right in my fucking stomach it's going to burst in and I'm going to explode you bet your ass I'm giving it a 5 out of 5 <laughs> Thank you, random thing that goes to that whenever I say a 5 out of 5. Hmm. Yes, I would say it's still a very perfect series. Like I said, there's only one quote unquote negative, but as I clarify, it doesn't really matter. That's not the whole point to it. I beg you, go and watch the series right in a second. I, I, I can say enough. Go! What do you say? Go! <laughs> Get out of here! <sighs> Till then, see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.
motherfucker wanna keep playing the motherfucking game. Well, you know what? I got my old buddy here, Mr. Hamill here, come and help me out. This nice. Damn thing is stuck. Uh, whatever. Uh, hmm. Well, if there's anything nice about all this, let me just check, just in case. One thing I can say nice about these people is at least, at least this time, they didn't fucking teleport me buck fuck alleyway, Nick's house, Saul's house, or fucking alleyways, or even buck fuck nowhere. Uh. God, why me? Why me? Eh. Not like a fucking do. Now, now it's night time. Yes, I, I love the consistency of this. The consistency of all this. Wait. Consistent, consistency. I think that's what I meant. Still. I love it. It's, it's fucking dark. It, night time. Blah. Okay. You know. I, I got you. Uh, okay. You know, let me try something out. Let, let's do a little experiment here, boys and gals. Okay. Let's suspect. It is right now daytime. Nighttime. It is daytime! It is daytime! And once I go over here... Nighttime. I, I don't understand how. I... I don't. Okay. 
do this one more time. Daytime! Nighttime. I... I don't get this. I don't. If, if I'm gonna be fair about something at least, again, they, they did put me in my own house. I swear, you can't even make this shit. Fuck! Oh, fuck you. Oh, dude, look, Fuck! Great. Yeah, of course. Fucking of course. Respond like in fucking portal. Yeah. No. No. Jesus. How can this possibly get any fucking worse? Uh, no. Next year, if I can always crash into him in his room, I think he wouldn't mind. <laughs> Fuck.